Okay, so um, firstly, I want to just thank everyone for, for being here today and thank um, in particular Ashwell for, for making himself available. Um, we do have, uh, you know, on this, on this platform, there's 40 minutes that you get kind of free. So we'd like to kind of keep this quite compact um, and, and allow everyone to, to get their questions in. So as you've seen this morning, um, the, we have announced the, the squad for the 2021 season. Um, I, I don't think I need to um, announce the, the player by player, um, but I'd like to open the, the floor up um, straight away. Firstly, if, um, if I can start um, and then can get everyone going. As your first impressions, obviously it was a um, it was a tough um, it was a tough off season in terms of contracting. Um, it seemed to start a lot earlier than than normal. Um, how happy are you with the guys that that you have and Obviously, a bit of a, a word about the players that have left. Yeah, look, I mean, we are, we are extremely excited about the players that we've brought in. Um, you know, there's a lot of exciting players there. Some pace, obviously, in the bowling department. Um, some experienced players in terms of one-day cricket or white ball cricket. And that's obviously, that's an area where we felt we need strengthening because we've over the last three years we've been more competitive in four-day cricket than we have been in, in white ball cricket so we're excited about the players that we brought in and, and, and that they'll be able to um, make us stronger uh, in the white ball format um, and then obviously you know looking back at the guys that have left um, you know just to pay tribute as I said in my statement to, to people like um, especially Rory Kleinfeld, uh, Dane Pitt and Dane Patterson, who, who have been stalwarts of Western Province and the Cobras over the last 10 to 15 years. Uh, and then obviously, um, some other players have left as well. Uh, people like Lazard Williams also, also been here for a while. Uh, playing opportunity has been hard to come by for a player like him. But then obviously, people like Ferrisco and Tando and Bukaku and others that have left as well. Uh, if I can just say that, um, you know, with 100% of the country's players' contracts coming to an end, it was a little bit of a nightmare actually to, to get around this, this transfer window or to get through it because it's basically free for all and, you know, higher is better type of situation, which is, which is not ideal. Uh, CSA has come out and and told us that we can give eight players a two-year contract for, for starting from 1st of May. Um, so again, next year, you'll have 10 players that it's free for all, um, you know, in terms of anybody around the country offering. And what makes things worse is that if we do go to 12 provinces next year, it's even more of a bun fight because you then have... 10 players who possibly all of them could be gone again uh, because there'll be people with sitting with a lot of money with not a lot of players and they can throw whatever they like at these players um, which makes things very difficult. Okay, I'll open up the floor straight away as I hear first. And just unmute yourself as um, I announce your name. Yep. Morning, Ash. How are you doing? Um, Morning, just, uh, yeah, good. good. Thanks. On, on your list of contacted players, you obviously said uh, for well, Walter Dave Patterson, has he, um, has he officially signed a callback? Well, we are, um, we've been informed that, that he is um, he's doing so, um, but he needs um, final boxes to be ticked by the ECB. Okay, so he says intention to sign a callback, it's not signed yet. Uh, well, we've been told that it's it's going to be done. Okay, and that I mean, just just on that, I mean, that's a uh, although he's a bit older. I mean, you you had a lot to say about Colpax uh, and and Greek South Africa at the beginning, in the middle of the season. We lost David Bellingham. Is that do you still feel that way? Do I still feel which way? Sorry. About you, I remember you being you were very vocal in regards to when Bedding, David Bellingham left earlier in the. In the in the season, um, and that's this is another one of your of your players signing callback. Is it a little bit different because Pat is, Pat is a bit older? Yeah, I think it is different. Um, I think 
individual players uh, or individual cases or every case have to be handled individually as far as these things are concerned. When a player gets to over 30, and especially in the case of a bowler, I mean, at 30 years old as a batsman, I think you still have some good years left in you. As a bowler, as a 30-plus year old, you don't have that many years left in you. You've got to kind of, I'm sure these guys um, sit down and calculate uh, um, what realistic opportunities will they have of playing for the approaches. And if not, then, the, the, then they'll consider other options. And I think this is probably how this came about, uh, which is very different to uh, David Beringham case, I would say. Um, in, that, in that situation, I do believe, or I, I still believe that um, David Beringham's best chance of international cricket is to play for SA. I think, um, you know, he knows how highly I rated him, or I, I rate him as a player. And I've communicated that with him, with him um, in terms of my thoughts about him making it all the way to the top. Um, but, you know, there are other factors um, that play a massive role in these decisions. And we seem to never want to deal with those factors. And we're always talking around those factors. Okay, sir. Just uh, on, on the issue, just um, Pat, uh, on Pat, though, just, uh, I mean, he played in the last test of the summer. He made his debut. He's been part of well, um, one day squads and T20 squads. And, and there's a world T20 um, scheduled for later. We don't know if it's going to happen. But, I mean, for when, the, when a guy makes his debut in the last test of the summer and, then he, and he leaves at the, in the middle, you know, after just a couple of weeks later, isn't that disappointing? It is, but then... You know, the player also asked if I just played for the Proteas a few weeks ago, why am I not in any one-day squads? Why am I not in any 2020 squads? So you got to look at it from both perspectives. Um, you know, you, you guys are looking at it from, from one side. He's, he's saying, well, maybe I only played in the test because so many guys were injured. KG was suspended. And Gidi was unfit uh, or injured. Um, and then maybe that's why I played in the test match. And then the one-day squads comes out, the 2020 squads come out, and I don't feature in any of them. So, you know, like I say, I'm sure these players, it's massive decisions for them. It's... it's um, so, it's not taken lightly. I think there's a lot of thought gone into it. Uh, Phil Sunday. Afternoon, everyone. Afternoon, Ash. Um, Good just, afternoon, sir. Just a, a note on, on some of the, the new guys in your, in, your, in your squad. I mean, you guys got Ziad Abrahams and Ishmael uh, Hafael Dun from, from the Borland. And of course, Onke Nyako from the Warriors. Tsepo Morek is no stranger to, to the Cobras. He comes back for, for a second stint from the, from the Titans. Imran Manak. Just on those guys, how, how are you seeing them... Uh, take shape in terms of of a Cape Cobra's point of view uh, and contributing um, uh, across all formats and not just the the the, uh, the 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 one day stuff that you said probably needed improvement, but also the four day stuff. I mean, you guys came close uh, a season ago in winning that four day domestic uh, uh, competition, but fell fell at the at the last day. So, how do you see those guys strengthening every department of of, of, of the Cape Cobras franchise? Look, I think at the end of the day, um, the guys who um, have stayed with the Cobras through this transfer window, they, they've kind of been the, they've kind of been the, the core of the team. Uh, and predominantly, they will be the starters in, in, in most of the competitions. And, you know, a large part of the transfer window is securing is making sure that you secure good depth in the squad. Um, obviously, this season gone by, we've had quite a few call-ups to the national team, and that's hurt us. Um, the Anaman, Anaman, Kyle, George, all the way at the same time. And then, obviously, somebody like David Benningham getting uh, called up or signing the contract just before the, the, the Momentum Cup started. That is for... Four key players of our one-day squad uh, that we missed. And then it, it had a major effect on the squad. So, you know, in going forward, we wanted to make sure that, um, obviously, we're excited about the call-ups. I mean, 
that's part of our job. That's that's you know I, I will never begrudge that situation. In fact, um, um, it gives a lot to the squad players an opportunity. Uh, but we have to make sure that we have um, that we have some good quality in the depth of our squad and and some of the guys that have come in, uh, they understand the situation that they will they will be those players that that provide depth to the squad. Um, Zubair has, has lost his place in the test squad, but we do expect him to go back into the test squad. Peter Malan has been in the test squad, and and I'm expecting people like Kyle Varane also to be to be called up, even if they don't play, they might be called up to those squads, and then and then we then we lost, you know, then we, without them or then we without those players, and we have to make sure that we have we have quality in the depth of our squad. Sandy, you've requested a follow up. Uh, just on a guy like Onke Nyako, what do you see in, in him? He's obviously uh, probably still a little bit wet under the uh, behind the ears in terms of franchise cricket is, 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 is concerned. But what kind of all-rounder are you looking uh, f- from him? Or what kind of all-round abilities do you think uh, he possesses? And, and how do you see those um, sort of in, improving uh, at the Cobras? He's an exciting player. Um, what I like about him is his attitude. A lot of a lot of uh, our homework goes into people's attitudes and what they will bring to the team. That obviously uh, comes with their skill that they bring to the team as well. Um, he's got a good attitude. He's got good energy. He's uh, he's a good catcher. He I think his bowling will suit our pitches, um, especially our outgrounds like uh, Paul and Outsuren. Um, and you know he can hit the ball. Um, like I said, one day cricket is important. We, in all likelihood, we'll have two white ball competitions this year, um, and making sure that we have depth in that that department. One day cricket is 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 important, and I think somebody like him will will be a good first class cricketer, but also uh, very good in the limited over formats. Khaled, your question, please. Uh, Ash, just a word on um, Tony De Zorzi. Um he, him coming into your side now, of course. And, and um, I wanted to ask, because obviously he has quite a bit of experience um, playing for the Titans, etc. In, 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 obviously in domestic cricket. When you, when you do lose your players to, to um, the Proteas, etc., do you expect him to immediately step up as a leader in the side? Yeah, again, uh, we talk about the players' characters and what they bring. And he obviously brings uh, some leadership with, with these skills as well. Um, that's another factor that is, that is a massive one for us. It's, it's basically a new era. Um, when I say new era, it's, it's the end of the Rory Kleinfeld. Uh, Dane Patterson, Vernon Philander, Dane Pitt, all those type of guys. And they were all leaders within the team. And obviously going forward, you'll have to set up a, a new leadership group. And he's somebody that um, is a deep thinker about the game. He's got good leadership qualities, um, as well as obviously um, great skills with a bat. And and again, you know, we look at the overall picture and what, what a person can bring to the squad. In Boland? Ken, your question? You did. Ken, you there? Ken's asleep. Maybe he's muted. <laughs> Let's go to Shafik in the meantime. Hi Ash, hi everyone. Um, just in terms hi, of captaincy, uh, Hamza led, uh, led the, the team at the end of the season. Is he going to be the captain if he's available? And who are the other leaders you, you are looking for next season? Yeah, we. Um, he's one of the guys, obviously having captained a lot this season. He's one of the guys um, that will play a major role in terms of the leadership. Um, and like I say, a little bit closer to the start of the season. Obviously, we haven't had much time with the uh, lockdown to to have discussions about these things. Um, but yeah, I mean, he will in all likelihood would be the captain. Uh, and then people like Calvarine, Tony De Zorzi, Peter Milan, 
uh, Yanaman Malan even as well. Um, they all bring that element uh, to the team. Um, so it will be a young group of leaders. Your question, Ken? Yeah, sorry, I was new today. Um, yeah, afternoon, David. Afternoon, Ashwell. Um, afternoon, Ashwell, you, you mentioned earlier other factors playing a role uh, in, in all the players leaving. Um, you said we always talk around those factors and don't deal with them. What factors are you referring to? I prefer not to, to speak about that in a press conference. I, I've mentioned uh, these things at, um, at the coaches' conferences. Uh, CSA are well aware of the factors. Um, and, you know, I, I believe that that's my platform to raise these issues, uh, which I have done in the past, which I will do in the future. Um, for me, ultimately, you know, we've got to get the system uh, to operate as best as we can. Um, we've got to try and, with our unique circumstances, try and find solutions or, or improve the system if, it, if there are areas that can improve. And it's important that we identify these areas. And like I say, when I get to the coaches' conferences, I, I tend to make my opinions uh, heard or felt about that. And hopefully from there, um, you know, whoever sits the committees of decision-making can, can consider those and, and um, make some decisions to improve the system. Your question, Nazri? Uh, afternoon, everyone. Um, Ash, um, just uh, you signed uh, Mangalisa Musekli at the back end of um, last season. Um, was it was it temptation uh, to sign another keeper or an experienced keeper, seeing that that Kyle uh, could be uh, with the Proteus um, a lot next season? Yeah, we, there was. Uh, in fact, we did offer him a contract, <laughs> Mangi, um, and then it was. His, his agent said to me, it's done. It's 99% it's done. <laughs> and then the next day, he phoned me back and said he's changed his mind. Um, and basically, again, I mean, every, every union or every franchise is going through the same situation. You know, um, all of a sudden, three or four of your players are, le are, are gone. And then you're sitting with a whole lot of money. Uh, and then, you know, the Dolphins was able to offer Mangi a last-minute contract. And he decided to stay there. Uh, instead of having to to pack up and and move house again, um, so that's the situation. I mean, that's that's what happened there. But um, having said that, we do have some depth in our in our um, senior provincial structures, and we have some wicket keepers that maybe we overlooked the season that we could have gone to, but we obviously tried to bring Mange in. Or the reason for bringing Mange in is that he brought a lot of experience and. It was kind of a needs must situation for us at that time of the season. Uh, Pelisandi, your question? Ashwell, do you think that you might be a little bit light on the batting front? Uh, I know you, you spoke about um, you know the, some of the bowlers being being really exciting, and particularly the pace bowlers coming in. But do you feel that you might be slightly um, sort of you know light on the batting side? <laughs> um, not at all. Um, you know, apart from apart from the regular sort of Proteas players, uh, first eleven players, if you exclude them, uh, and I wouldn't I wouldn't class um, any of our players as regular Protea players yet. Um, so if you exclude the regular Protea players, I'd like to think that. We actually have one of the strongest batting lineups in the country, um, and and I feel that especially somebody like Tony Dezorzi will strengthen that even further. So, so no, I don't think so. Um, I think we have quite an exciting batting lineup, um, and and well, at least for 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 the Cobras, the future looks solid in that department. And then obviously you will have your challenges when you, when you have perhaps Verena and Hamza being called up at the same time or Verena and Yanaman Milan at the same time when it's one-day cricket or Zubair after his fantastic one-day 
um, campaign for the Cobras might get a call up to the one day um, setup of the protest as well. And then, you know, you have to make sure that you have a little bit of depth and that's where young players like, um, when I say young, younger players like John O'Bird, who obviously had a taste the season, comes into play. Um, he's had a taste of it and he handled himself quite well at, at, uh, at franchise level. And then obviously there's other people like Alvin Savage um, and um, Ismail as well who, who will come into the, into the fray. And I think deservingly so because, because of what they've done for their provinces. And then we have some depth also. I mean, unfortunately, you can only contact 18 players. There's some other players um, within our domestic uh, structures. When I say our domestic, our, our three affiliates that have performed well. Um, there's another youngster, obviously, at Bula, uh, who's also coming out of the S-19 setup. Unfortunately, missed out on the, on the World Cup with the 19 who's, who's banging a lot of runs out there. So, all these young players are on the radar, and we do feel that we have depth in that department. Zahir, your question? Ash, um, obviously, the, the season ended prematurely, and... Um, we, we know we know the the challenges that you faced this year with your with a lot of your your players being called up and to national teams and that's a, obviously a, a you know a good thing for you as a, as a coach that you're developing national players but when when the reality of the season is that you know you you finished last in the four days and sick what's last in the one days and does that how do you, how are you feeling going going ahead for the new season like where are you sitting in the in the mix at the moment yeah, I think, again, perspective is important. Like I said, I mean, I've, I've admitted that we, we haven't been great in white ball cricket over the last few years. So we, we wanted to strengthen as far as that's concerned. I think of the eight completed four-day matches, we were probably in the diving seat in most of the ones that we've drawn. Um, and, um, you know, we lost one. Uh, the opening match in Poch on a what I like to think was a substandard pitch by 10 runs or 11 runs, I think. It might have been 15. Um, so we were right in the game there. Uh, and on in six of the draws, I think we were in the driving seat with most of those games affected by weather. Um, rain and Shorten. And one could argue that um, the rain probably saved the opposition more than they saved the Cobras in those matches. So I take things with perspective. I also felt that uh, if we won our last two games, um, and the last two games would have been Lions and um, nice. Knights away. If you, if, you beat, if you beat the Lions, uh, then you're six points off the lead uh, because they were the leaders. So, you know, it's last, yes, but there's a lot more to, to the story than just looking at the, <laughs> the sheet at the end of the season. I mean, in one day cricket, it's obvious. We, we need uh, some improvement there. And I think that's why a lot of the recruitments have been based around one day cricket. Your and, and as just from yes. as, as a as a as a young, a relatively young coach, I mean, what, your third season. Like, did you feel that you learned things this season in terms of like of of particularly in terms of player management of what the expectations are when they go up and they come down and you know and and how that goes um and how and how that works going forward? Is, do you feel that this this season has has, has helped you as a coach as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it's massive. I mean, you know, players go up there, um, and obviously there's certain expectations placed on them. Um, there's also some tinkering of techniques that happen up there. You know, sometimes um, you know these things are not communicated down, and then players come down. You know, it, cricket is all about mindset. You know, I mean, players come back and maybe they. I don't know. Uh, maybe that, those things should be left for the dis discussion at the coaches' conference. Uh, maybe not for you. Uh... Your question, Thayer? Um Hi, coach. Uh, Tahir here. Yeah. Um, just um, a couple of things. Uh, firstly, I wanted your Zahir kind of covered the question I was going to ask you looking back at the season. But uh, just uh, looking ahead to the new season, just, just your thoughts on the format. Obviously, now the two two sections, two different pools. That's just your thoughts on that and, and the dynamics of the way the season's made up? 
Honestly, my thought about that is that the sooner we can come to something that's going to be around for 10, 15, 20 years, the better. That's my feeling about that. Um, another makeshift kind of seven matches, this, that and the other, two groups of three. I'm not convinced by that, um, honestly. I'm not convinced by that. And I know um, these decisions are based on finances. Um, I, the sooner we can get to, this is what cricket, this is what our system is going to be for the next 10 years. Um, and getting it as fine-tuned as possible. Um, I know people are against opening it up and um, going back to the 12 provinces. And I know people have their reasons for that. Uh, I'm a firm believer that that's the way to go. Um, obviously, having played cricket around the world, and especially uh, in England and in South Africa, before the franchise system, it works. Uh, why I say it works is because uh, I think in South Africa, all the smaller provinces, bar... Um, let me get my head around it now. There's one team that didn't win a trophy. Um, I can't put my finger on it now. But... I think it might be Northwest, but um, Bulans have won, uh, Griquas have won, um, Easterns beat us in the four-day final, um, and you know we you might regard them as smaller teams, but they produce if they can get a good squad of 15 together, maybe not even 20 players or 18 players. If if a team can get a good squad of 15 together, they can be competitive. With players playing more regularly, they can stake a claim for higher honours. Um, I do believe that there are far too many cricketers not playing regularly uh, in South Africa. And like I say, I'm a big fan of, of, of it opening up. Um, I'm a big fan of more people getting opportunity to play. And even if you regard it as a smaller province, um, you know, you, you, let's say uh, um, one of these youngsters that we've just signed, Safield, you know, whatever. I mean, he could have been playing a full season for Boland at the highest level instead of maybe catching one or two games for the Cobras next season. You know, so you're a young player, um, you get to play all the games, your growth, your rate of growth is just far superior then come into training every day. Because the game is the best teacher. Not, not the coaches. <laughs> uh, although coaches might believe that they're the best teachers. The game is the best teacher. Playing the game, learning from your mistakes in the heat of the moment, that's the best learning that you can have. And not coming to nets every day and having a madman like myself shout at you uh, for fielding or whatever the case may be. You know, the game is the best teacher. And, you know, if you use the... English example again if I have to go back to that or stick to South African example let's not talk about England let's stick to the South African example um, you know before we became franchises we had places like Easton's produce people like Andre now um, Andrew Hall uh, Zander De Brain go and play for the Proteas out of Easton's you had places like Border giving you Striker Stradum and Steve Powerman and Makai Antini and Mark Boucher. If you go back to Boland, they gave you plenty. Henry, Henry Williams, Roger Tillamarcus, Henry Davids, Justin Ontong, Charles Langefeld. So the smaller provinces, or what we would like to regard as the smaller provinces, they have talent and they will produce players for the country. Um, and I don't see, I can't see any better thing than, you know, um, those guys playing at the highest level week in, week out. Final question. Um, Thank uh, you. Sorry, Ken and then Pilasandi to, to wrap up. Ken, unmute yourself. Yeah, uh, Ashwell, yeah, I have this down. <laughs> Quick learner. Um, Ashwell, it, it must be a bit of a concern uh, the number of players you've lost this season um, from last season. Have you, has there been any sort of um, indication that there's any sort of consistency in the reasons for these guys going? Um, or do you feel it's just all individual circumstances, different reasons for, for guys wanting to leave the Cobras? 
Um, I think it's it's largely based around um, a lot of the people who are left is individual situations. Uh, people like Farisco Adams, Lazard Williams. It was really hard for them to get game time at the Cobras. Um, people like Patterson, Dane Pitt, uh, David Beddingham have obviously seen greener pastures. Um, a completely different route they've taken. Um, but the most exciting thing for me, or, or, or not the most, the most important thing for me was holding on to all our best players and the guys basically who, who debuted and or represented the Proteas over the last six to 18, six uh, to 12 months. Final question for Phyllis Sunday. Yeah, actually, just on that, I mean, you, you can obviously mention the, the amount of players that you guys have let go. Uh, one particular one that sort of strikes uh, proper, proper attention is, is the loss of Tando and Dini. And was there any consideration from uh, the franchise to keep him? Uh, what was the situation around him leaving and going to the Titans? I think Tando will be the best person to answer. Um, I think if you 19, 20 years old and you kind of a regular starter in all competitions and you get offered a contract and um, there's, there's room for negotiation in contract. Um, obviously, there was because, I mean, he became obviously an important player for us very quickly. Um, and if you think that you're probably down to start the first game of next season in the best or the strongest Cobras team, um, then maybe, you know, the best person to ask is Tando himself uh, why he left. Um, I, I know the circumstances around it. And I know that there are, there are other factors at play. Um, and maybe, you know, it's not my place to, to say what they are. Um, so maybe it's best that you speak to the player or his representatives and, and they can give you an answer. Was there a counter offer from the, the, the Cobras? We weren't, we weren't given an opportunity to make a counteroffer. Okay. Thank you. All right, guys, is that all? David, can I just, did, yeah. David, can I just jump in at the end, yeah? Sure, I'll just. Um, as well, just on that, just about all the players that you've mentioned that's left, including all the guys you mentioned as part of your leadership group, uh, Pitty, Pato, Vernon, Rory, they all seem to be bowlers. Are you, sort of are you happy that you have enough experience with all of the bowlers coming in, um, especially for four-day cricket, where probably experience is a bit more vital. Yeah, look, I think it's a it's a valid point. Um, having said that, um, Vernon hardly played a four-day game for us this season. Vernon didn't play a four-day game for us this season. Neither did Rory. So, in terms of that experience in four-day cricket. Um, Dane Pitt and Dane Patterson, they, they were the, the key bowlers in, in that department. But I think um, over this last season, obviously, George Linder has emerged as a serious contender in the, in the spin bowlers department with two tenfers this season. Um, and uh, two um, franchise hundreds in four-day cricket. So he's, he's grown in stature and obviously earned, earned, earned uh, a test debut and uh, ODI call-up. So there's been tremendous growth there um, as far as George is concerned. And then, yeah, I mean, Dane Patterson will be missed because he was kind of the leader of the, of the four-day attack uh, in terms of the, the seam bowlers. And, um, yeah, but that creates opportunity for, for some exciting players in, in terms of, obviously, in Andre Berger and, um, and Corbin Bosch. Okay, Any further you. questions, guys? Thank you, uh... Thank you very much for, for everyone joining this afternoon. Um, Ash, thanks very much for your time. Much appreciated. Um, wishing you and your, your families uh, all the best. Um, and we hope to see you and chat to you soon. Uh, we'll communicate any, any more press conferences via, um, via Cricket South Africa and the official channels as well. Thanks very much, guys. All the best. Thanks so much, David. Thanks, thanks, guys. Thanks,